it was mind blowing. Um, you can see all these concentric rings. It's been likened to sort of God's thumbprint in some uh, <laughs> in some sort of corners of the internet. Um, we were really lucky when we went to our ground-based telescopes. Uh, we'd, we'd, we'd consider ourselves really chuffed if we came back with one or even two of those shells. And uh, just the idea that you could just see this nested set of shells marching out. What you're looking at there is 150 years worth of uh, orbits. Every time the binary goes past, uh, it puffs out this elegantly sculpted shell of dust and each one then nests inside the one before it the one before it coasts out and then a new one's created inside it's it's like this beautiful kind of set of nested russian dolls <laughs> and so the, these uh two are they planets in a in an intergalactic dance or how do you describe what's happening there well uh, it's a it, they're stars and of course in space everything has to move if it's not moving it's falling in because uh that's the way gravity goes so earth has to go around the sun in order to not to fall in and stars are the same if a star is in orbit around a companion star astronomers call that a binary system uh they have to be in orbit and this particular one as you could see in the animation uh is in an elliptical orbit that's not exactly a circle and because of the geometry of the ellipse and the way the dust is created, uh, it's made in this specific shape. And explain for us why one of the stars is, from that graphic we've seen before, is throwing out this dust and the other star isn't. Well, in actual fact, the dust is kind of a product of both stars. Okay. Uh, one of the stars is a, is a very special star in the system. It's called the Wolf Rea. And wolf rays are uh, they're quite spectacular in themselves they're the end point of the evolution of a very massive star the next thing that a wolf ray does is it blows up this is what we know as a supernova so sort of the last bus stop on on a road to oblivion um, which happens very fast massive stars live fast and they they die young um, and because it's really at this extreme edge of existence it's nearly flying apart under its own luminosity it's launching this titanic wind but the other star in the system is no slouch either this is kind of a battle of the heavyweights they're both massive uh strong powerfully luminous stars and it can hold its own it's a it's a blue supergiant so because of the fact that there's two massive stars all in this dance uh the dust ends up getting sculpted into these sort of exquisitely beautiful forms i, I really love this system yeah, and, and why is it so unusual? Why don't we see these concentric rings happen, happening with other stars that are in this uh, uh, space dance? Well, I mean, for, for a start, massive stars are already very rare. It's like, you know, an ecosystem, you know, you, you, you have a lot of ants, but you don't have many sort of uh, elephants. Uh, stars work the same way, massive, like not one star in a billion is a wolf ray a in the galaxy it's very rare star for a start and then you need a very rare subtype of that star to make this dust um this dust trick work for you and even then you need it to be in a binary system just like the one we see on the screen so there's lots and lots of things all have to be uh happening at once it's sort of this high set of unlikely chances have to line up to create one of these dust uh producing wolf ray a systems and so were you aware that it was going to pop up on this James Webb image or did you just notice, <laughs> notice it there and how excited were you when you saw it? Um, I, I, well, in all fairness, I was part of the team that proposed uh, this star to be one of the ones that okay. Webb would look at. But we didn't really know when things would come down from, from the Webb because the, the telescope's up there in deep space and it's got its own schedule files and it's quite a, quite, quite a tricky game that NASA has to juggle because they've got to look at different sight lines and they've got to keep the sun off the telescope. So I had no idea that it would be one of the first images to drop. And when it did drop, I also then had no idea that the image would be quite as, as startling as it is. I, I, I thought maybe we'd see three or four shells a little better than we'd done before. But the fact that we just see these rungs marching out into the void, that, that was a jaw dropping for me.